So the one good thing that came out of the Royal Rumble 2015 edition pay-per-view was Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar versus John Cena for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Now at this point, this is Lesnar's third match as WWE World Champion, and well, it's kind of obvious because he's a part-timer, and therefore they had to skip out on a bunch of stuff and had to give younger guys the main event slots. Much to, I'm pretty sure, Kevin Dunn's frustration, specifically since they were mostly NXT guys and internet fans. So, yeah, I bet they were pissed. Um, anyways, so, for the journey to get to the Royal Rumble actually began practically close to Hell in a Cell. Um, John Cena had defeated Randy Orton for what it seems like the millionth time inside Hell in a Cell for the second time. I believe Randy Orton won the first one, but since there's been so many matches, I've just kind of forgot. And this was supposed, and this was for a number one contendership for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship when Lesnar came back. And yeah, I always question that logic because Rollins and Ambrose should have been given that match and should have been given that qual that 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 achievement. Instead of, Ray, instead of Orton and Cena, because Cena and Orton match was the loser match, whereas Rollins and Ambrose was the winner match. Whoever won the match would face Seth Rollins inside Hell in a Cell, and whoever lost the match at whoever lost the match would be the loser match for Hell in a Cell. So why give that logic? Like I know they explained that Seth Rollins suggested it, but like still. That doesn't make sense to me. Like, it, it didn't. Meanwhile, Seth Rollins is on this hot streak of momentum since he destroyed the Shield and was doing great as a heel, you know, before he won the WWE Championship and then they just screwed it up. And they go ahead and let Rollins basically get the authority back in power after he lost them at Survivor Series due to Sting's interference. And this would lead to Seth Rollins basically holding Edge hostage. Now, I've always wanted to talk about this angle. Um, yeah, he forced John Cena to reinstate the authority by kidnapping Edge and threatening to either cripple him or kill him. <sighs> yeah, um... Especially them bringing up that Edge is a father and the fact that Edge's health could, neck could give out at any moment. I would thought that was a stupid idea. Like, they could have found any other way. Like, I get the, I get the logic behind it, but, like, still, like, you gotta be concerned about this retired wrestler's health because his neck was, is frat, is pretty much, uh, could give out at any moment should any physical things like this happen. And then Rollins goes ahead after Cena forces forcibly reinstates the authority. He says, "But damn, man, you gotta know me better than that. I'm gonna kill him anyways." And like, you just acknowledge that this was a death angle. Like, I know no one died, but still, threatening to kill somebody and attempting to call the police. And then before, a week before that, I believe, like, Seth Rollins seemingly aligns with Paul Heyman after a steel cage match with John Cena, which confused me. Like, I'm wondering, wait, why are they buddy buddies now? So isn't Lesnar kind of looking at Cena as a, a Cena and Rollins as a threat? Like, Cena's the number one contender to his title, and Rollins is the money in the bank cash holder. So, Yeah. And it was never explained. I, I was expecting that. It was never brought up again. It was never explained. We didn't get any reason behind it. And now it seems like when the Authority got back in power, Lesnar and Heyman joined in on the celebrations. And we still did not get an explanation. And this led to people writing on the internet because I had to under I understand why. Because... No one liked the, the Authority storyline feeling like it dragged out for too long. And the Authority was pretty much going back to square one all the time. So, yeah. So, after that, on the on the return of the Authority on the first Raw of the new year, uh, 
Triple H awarded Seth Rollins his loyalty with a WWE Championship match at the Royal Rumble, making it a triple threat match. And this would lead to a build-up, which was awesome, because Rollins really showed his skills at this point. Like, he was showing his skills already, but this really, he turned it up to 11. Especially having the gall to threaten Lesnar, claim he's not scared of Lesnar. And I believed it, because this Rollins was different than the one we got later on. Yeah, if you look at 2014 to early 2015 Rollins up until WrestleMania, you would say, yeah, I can believe him. Yeah, I can believe he'd be a threat to Brock Lesnar. And if you look at 2015 to the to that end, to to mid-2015 to the end, uh, when he got injured, then you would say, this guy was the threat to Brock Lesnar at one point. What happened? Like, I even ranted about this, about his championship ring being one of the most disappointing in recent memory. So, anyways, during a contract signing, Lesnar rarely spoke on this, claiming that he conquered The Undertaker, he conquered Triple H, he conquered John Cena, and he said, and I damn sure will conquer you. And Cena was in the background for most of it, and they mostly kept bashing Cena a lot, which was awesome. And afterwards, um, <clears throat> Lesnar disappeared while Seth Rollins and John Cena had to pretty much build up the match. Since, well, Lesnar appearing multiple weeks in a row, that would be that would be asinine. So after Seth Rollins curb stomped Brock Lesnar and John Cena at the contract signing, which really made Seth Rollins stand out as, oh my god, a heel that's actually dominating and standing out on top? And it's not... a and it's not Triple H and the sh and the whole beatdowns of Daniel Bryan kind of thing? Oh my god, we're getting something different! Granted, it's still technically the authority, but it's at least Seth Rollins doing it himself. So anyways... So afterwards, um... Sting got technically involved in the storyline when he assisted Cena to win the match that reinstated a three-on-one handicap match to reinstate Dolph Ziggler, Eric Rowan, right back into getting their jobs back. And, well, Brock Lesnar also showed up and destroyed everybody. He lifted Big Show up and beat him up. Beat the living hell out of Seth Rollins. Beat the living hell out of Kane. And that was awesome. And the audience was just craving for it. Because Lesnar wanted revenge. So... That led to everyone speculating, is Lesnar going to lose the belt? This was when everyone was freaking out. Like, everyone was split. Like, is Lesnar winning the belt, or is Cena winning the belt? Like, they knew Seth Rollins was gonna, not going to win the belt, because one, he has the Money in the Bank contract, and two, everyone knew, yeah, he's just there to eat the pinfall, because God knows Cena can't do it again. Like, they gave, like, yeah, Night of Champions rematch. We really need to not go there. Maybe one day. So, anyways. As I was saying. Um, after this. <clears throat> so after this. Uh, a report came out that Dirty was testing the waters for a potential face turn for Lesnar. And then they were speculating that they might drop the belt to Cena. And I'm glad they didn't. Because if they did do that then the audience in Philadelphia, you know, the pro-hating Cena crowd, and that would have led to a similar riot than they did with Roman Reigns winning the Royal Rumble that same night. Though, really, Philadelphia is known to be a very passionate crowd. ECW certainly helped that happen. But anyways... <clears throat> Yeah, like they had originally were going to have a Cena versus versus um Lesnar match again, and I was glad they put Seth Rollins in even though I knew yeah, he's going to eat the pinfall. Like there were several things I was expecting. One, Cena's going to try to look strong in this. B, Seth Rollins is going to take the pinfall, and C, and 3, um he is going to deliver a hell of a performance that tops all his other performances at that moment. And, well, you know, I was completely right. Like, okay, let's get into the match. Now, after they make their entrances and the fans chant, John Cena sucks! 
John Cena sucks. As always. And this would lead to... Lesnar would dominate the match early with multiple German suplexes on both Cena and Rollins. And then Lesnar applied the Kumura lock on Cena, but Rollins broke it up. And then this would lead to Cena executing an attitude adjustment, or the FU as it was originally called, on Lesnar, but was thrown out of the ring by Rollins, who stole a pin attempt, but Lesnar surprisingly kicked out at one. And Lesnar caught Rollins and executed an F5 on him, but Cena broke up the pin. And Cena and Rollins would also double-team on Lesnar occasionally. And then after Lesnar got pissed off when he couldn't get Cena down again, he broke... He Took it to he dismantled the table and then tossed a mantra to the ground in vicious fashion. Kind of fits Brock Lesnar. And Cena would then do three AAs because I knew it was gonna be a finisher galore because it's Brock Lesnar. So then Rollins took him out of the ring and threw Cena into the steel steps, and this would lead to Lesnar being curb stomped by Rollins and then Cena would break up the pinfall and yeah that was gonna yeah like okay what's happening next and then Lesnar gets out of the ring and he gets speared by Cena or tackled as Dudley like to say through the barricades and well the rest is history after that like Cena looks like he got him down and then he gets pissed off that seeing Lesnar still crawling then gets the steel st and then tosses him to the steel steps thinks it's over Lesnar gets back up and then hits him in the head with the steel steps tries to get it back into the ring Seth Rollins kicks him out and then does a fly onto the table with Lesnar on it which was awesome I'm trying to remember what the maneuver was uh, yeah, I'll just say diving elbow drop through the broadcast table. And then it was down to just C.N. Rollins. And when I saw this, I was like, is Lesnar hurt? Like, I was thinking a little bit that Lesnar was hurt. Mostly because I was just so desperate to not want to see Cena win the title yet. I didn't want him to see, to see him win the title because it just feels like we'd be going back to the same thing when it comes to Cena. Like, everything's all about Cena again. It's all about him. It's everything. Everything's always about him. It's always about the world revolves around John Cena and nobody else. And surprisingly, Cena would not hold the WWE title for two years. Though that will change in the upcoming Royal Rumble pay-per-view this year in 2017. But anyways, um... Anyways, Seth Rollins and Cena would go at it for a couple for the remainder of the match while Lesnar was comfortably relaxing in pain with a broken rib. Okay, not really, but well, let's just go with that. And doctors would come out backstage to check on and eventually attempt to stretch out Lesnar. And Cena hit an AA on Rollins, and I thought, well, it's over. Get ready for the riots on the internet. And surprisingly to everybody's shock... Rollins kicked out. Rollins kicked out of the AA. Okay. How many people can they say kicked out of the AA in the Super Cena era of John Cena's ego? Like, normally it takes one AA to take, take them out. And if it was a triple threat match, then they would have some convenient excuse with a third opponent. But when it's just down to two people... They really kick out, except for Lesnar. Like, Rollins has kicked out. Um, I don't know who else has kicked out. Like, Rollins is one of the few people I know. Like, I'm pretty sure Roman Reigns will probably kick out when they eventually do the... Um, <clears throat> when they eventually do the Reigns versus Cena dream match that many people don't want to see on the ground site, which is never end. And... Then Cena eventually locked the STF on Rollins, or the STFU as it was originally called, on Rollins, but JJ Security, JB Noble, and Joey Mercury broke it up, and then they did a triple powerbomb. Oh man, seal nostalgia. Just a small hint to hit piss off the fans. And Cena kicked out. Cena got Rollins out of the ring after he tried to use the Money in the Bank contract briefcase. 
and Cena ended up double Aing on Mercury and Noble, and then Cena hit an attitude adjustment on Rollins again, and Rollins executed a curve stomp on Cena, and they both both kicked out. And then Rollins does this look of desperation. He's freaking out. He looks at the ring post, and then he looks at Cena, almost like he wants to do something, but doesn't know if this will work. He does the Phoenix Splash, and it's a sting of sheer brilliance. Mostly because Rollins has... I have never seen Rollins use it on the main roster. He used it back in NXT. He used it back in the Indies, but he's hasn't done it before in the main roster bill and really hasn't done it since. I'm pretty sure he's done it on a live show or two, but those don't count in my opinion because we don't see them, which would be awesome. Like, yeah, someone might upload it on YouTube, but on TV, we never, we rarely see it. And that would be the first and only time he's ever done the Phoenix Splash. So then surprisingly, Lesnar, with a busted rib, I must add, um, charged back into the ring quickly and threw Cena out of the ring after German suplexing Rollins and then Rollins would hit the Lesnar with the briefcase twice and position the briefcase under Lesnar's head under Lesnar's head to get a second curve stomp, but Lesnar executed a second F5 to on uh, Rollins to retain the title. And that's the end of the match. That was an awesome match. That was a masterpiece. The only problem I have it is John Cena oversells the curb stomp a lot. How do you notice that? Like, like Lester, he takes it like a legitimate curb stomp, but when Cena does it, he flies into the air and then let and then Cena and then Cena gets curb stomped by Rollins. It just comes off as a little cartoony. Like yeah, I don't think you're supposed to fly. I think you're supposed to be just on your knees and hands and then take it like a man, not just fly into the end when, air when Seth Rollins about to, is about to do it. Like, what would happen if Rollins didn't do it and Cena did that? That that would just make it literally look stupid. So, yeah, what would happen after this match? Well, Lesnar would disappear, but then return to feud with Roman Reigns for WrestleMania, since he's, not, since he's contractually obligated not to show up at Fastlane. Rollins would move on to feud with Randy Orton, who would later go to war against the Authority, who had came back after Seth Rollins kicked him out. And last but not least, John Cena would go on to bury Rusev. Oh dear God, the love story happened that same year. Oh God. After Cena's, after the Cena feud. And, and I like to say this, I, I know this doesn't relate to the match, but or the storyline, but... I always had this one bugging issue. Like, Cena is the character of heroism and patriotism and do this, do that, and take your vitamins and say your prayers and whatnot. He's pretty much Hulk Hogan. Initially, Cena didn't seem to bring up the United States during his first match with Rusev. Instead, none of the commentators brought it up. They just brought up that, well, Cena just wants the U.S. title. Okay, so is America a second priority and the bell is a major? Like, even though Rusev has bashed the United States for over a year and a half? Okay. That makes no sense, but okay, you could not be a patriot, according to Cena. So long as that later comes on. Okay. And this would all accumulate at WrestleMania, and Seth Rollins would revisit his feud with Lesnar again heading into Battleground after he had cashed in money in the bank contract on him during the Roman Reigns vs. Brock Lesnar match, which I will get into another time, and eventually win the match and take the belt. And this is the Seth Rollins I want to see again when he's a heel. because, Like, right now he's a face at this time of the video, but I want to see him be a he when he becomes a heel again because it's inevitably going to happen... Can we get this Seth Rollins who's conniving, scheming, just downright opportunist-like? And, like, Jamie Noble and Jerry Mercury, they only helped Rollins twice. Whereas, after he won the belt, they helped him, like, all the time. So, 
what really, so why did they change that? Like, they killed the perfect formula that was going for that. He didn't use J&J security that much, but afterwards they said, oh god, he's champion now. Uh, through, make him look weak. Make him look like he's the worst champion of all time for some reason. And I have to be honest, that worked. Like, Savon's kept doing good matches, but due to the overexposed nature of the J&J security, Kane, the authority, and when Savon's did win a match clean, you didn't really buy into it because that's not the Rollins we know. This is a different Rollins they're presenting to us. So when he does do something clean, it just doesn't work. So those are my thoughts on the triple threat match at the Royal Rumble 2015 event. This was Neo Reality Entertainment. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and donate. Stay tuned for more.